How's it going? This is part 3 in the 2700 part uh, UK adventure. So in my arrival after I left Fishguard and after I left working or, or awakening those dragons on that hill I then head to Reading and I did work privately with people there so I won't go into details with that but I think it was the 27th that Valerie arrived over Valerie flew in so there was myself Valerie and Joanna we went to a place called Whittenham Clumps which is I think about a half an hour north of Reading another woman who I'll come back to later Susan had put us on to Whittenham Clumps and suggested that there was two hills a male a hill and a female hill, divine, feminine, divine, masculine. I had never been there before. I didn't really know much. So we kind of just floated this for 10 days, maybe beforehand of like, because we didn't really know where we were going. Valerie would be over for two nights, three days, and we've done work on the land in Ireland. So we weren't really sure where we were to go. There are the obvious kind of sites of like, oh, um, Stonehenge or blah, blah, blah. So we had never heard of Whitnam Clumps, and it's not a, a an historic location or anything, as far as I know. Kind of that day, I think we just felt okay. We need. We're going to go there. We're going to go there. So, got in the car. Uh, we collected Valerie from the airport, came back, had some food, and that was it. Bang! Got in the car and went to Whitnam Clumps. Didn't really know what it looked like, what it was there, what we were going there for, but found ourselves there. Parked in the car park and walked up the left hill. It is a very interesting place in the sense that again like the hill in Wales these two hills are kind of in the middle of flatlands and when you stand up atop them you can see for miles in any direction so they're quite unusual ley line wise or energetically wise I always wonder about places like this you know because that you can see they're 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 specific places they're there for a reason there is something flowing through them or beneath them and so on we walked up the left hill we got to the top there was a hawthorn tree uh, the hawthorn tree represent the fairies so you may notice or mightn't have said it or forget to say it but at each of these sites there's always a hawthorn tree so that the fairy is there basically uh, in Irish uh, as Valerie would would say it's Uaha. my Irish is dreadful so I think that's U-A-T-H-A which is the Irish for fairy so he would be there he would communicate and would sing to Valerie I don't pick up on that as clearly. I would be aware of him. I would be aware that they are with us or walking with us. And at times I would be aware of communication and receive some guidance. We arrived there, you know, it was a shoes off moment again. I think it was a frozen ground day. Uh, kind of snow on the ground, rock hard and pretty cold. Shoes and socks off. You know, Whittenham Clumps is like a bare hill, grass cut. There's actually cows, cattle grazing on it. And at the top, there is like a small forest, is too big a word, small clump of trees. Around it is a fence to close it off, and there are gates that you can go in. So we wander around this gate, and we're curious to go inside. And it's not a big area really at all. Find a gate, and on the gate there's a sign saying, you know, that these trees are infected with a fungus or a bacteria. You know, be careful on windy days because branches can fall and all the rest of it. So, fungus, bacteria, fungal, I think it says. So, that's some form of disease or parasite. So, we walk in, and immediately on walking in, we can feel the energy is quite dark, quite heavy. And as time passes in there, and we touch the trees, language from both of us comes through, we communicate. We're aware that really this is very, for want of a better word, satanic or very dark, traumatic energy. And in this space, we would be aware that there has been a lot of satanic abuse of boys, of young boys, young males on this land. So some of these places are ley lines or ley line intersections. They may, there may be dragons beneath them. There may be high energetic points. So the powers that be or the darker beings that be would be drawn to these points to subvert that energy so a lot of churches are built on the crosses of ley lines so the church can be about you know misdirecting us away from our sexuality away from our spirituality away towards darkness and control by the church as opposed to enlightenment or uh, self-empowerment or whatever you're having yourself so 
these hills as well, pur- the purpose of dark practices on this land would be to subvert that energy, would be to keep it locked and trapped and maybe to feed off it in a dark way and emanate that darkness out from that point. The trees were kind of rotten. You could feel it. You could feel it in the trees. You could feel it in the soil. It was abuse of boys. Now, to go back through, if you look on my website, there are pages, you know, of my services that I work with a lot of women and I would work with, uh, or not that I work with a lot of women, but a lot of my work is with women, generally, about the divine feminine and balancing divine feminine, divine masculine energy. So, this work on the land is the same thing it's just on the land as opposed to with a a person it's it's releasing be it feminine trauma or masculine trauma which a lot of us carry our own or a lot of us also have agreed to carry for for the masses or for the collective and then purge it for to release it for the collective i would really feel this in in this space we're both very aware i felt the physical pain you know my lower back you know without getting graphic i well that's graphic enough enough felt the pain and the abuse of boys and i felt physically sick in this place and purged there was a lot of coughing up and near vomiting uh, and in the stumps of some of these trees or where branches had broken off you could actually see faces you know faces the way the branch had broken off would be the face of something evil or something demonic looking or aggressive looking and there was one tree i found myself with that reminded me of if you've seen the picture of the rothschilds at the party i think it was in the 80s the kind of deer antlers on the woman's head there was a there was a very Rothschild feel to this place it just it just Rothschild just came to to us I can't really say more than that I don't know more than that so Rothschild kind of came to us but also the William Blake poem Jerusalem you know which meant mentioned Satanism on the land I just felt that just came to me out of nowhere I found this antler like tree and held it and the language came through and there was a communication there was a respect with this it was like that that was the center point of this land where the for want of a better word satanic energy was centered was located and was to communicate with me so from my part there was total respect and um i don't know if i'd say admiration but respect for this being you do your thing you do it very well uh, i have respect for you you're very powerful and we do our thing this plane is changing this energy is changing so you won't be able to feed here much longer so you can work with us or you can leave or you can remain if you want but you're not going to get fed there won't be any nourishment here for you anymore and then it's up to the entity to decide or entities to decide what they want to do so there's no big in the early days it was like be gone say these things are evil get out and now it's like no they work with us they serve a purpose they are they are god's beings as well they do their work we do our work this is just a transition so we did some work there it was really was a lot of purging a lot of sickness and we moved on then to the female hill we were aware that we took on board a lot of trauma from that place so it wasn't pleasant it wasn't nice and that evening wasn't nice either because we were all a bit kind of fucking all over the place and sickly and uh we wanted to move that on away from these sites there was regularly regular work between the three of us energy of clearing there was moments that the language had to come through or we had to clear a heart or we had to clear whatever because it was just quite heavy and ongoing we woke up to the female hill the gates are locked which is interesting so the divine feminine or the feminine energy is inaccessible we climb over the gates and it's very still there's no tracks of people walking through it the leaves are all fresh on the ground we w- kind of wander around there but it's very still there's not much to do but we find a tree uh, one tree with if i remember correctly irises growing freshly around the base of it which related to one of our group our circle we did some work at that tree and that was a special location or point an energetic point again and three of us did some work together with the tree with that energetic point and bang out of nowhere there's the uh, there's the robin the robin appears on a tree behind my mouth i remember dropped open at that i could barely speak because it's like there's the robin And that was that. We cleared that area. We moved on. So it was more about clearing in this instance. It was more about clearing the masculine energy which was being subverted and abused. And that sends out that trauma. 
you know, to males and females around that land or around the land, along those energetic ley lines, it's emanating out of, disc- of abuse, tr- you know, trauma, depression, anger, confusion, all that stuff. So then we make our way down. I'm sure I have forgotten loads of what happened in these experiences because there's loads of little points and realizations and work between each of us and connections and ah this that the other but I don't remember most of that stuff so I and I don't have time to kind of try to remember so so we make our way down and we're kind of heavy and we move on and and there is more there's a lot more things that happened that day uh, in different places and, and between the three of us and clearing ourselves that was Whitnam Clumps part one so we did return to Whittenham Clumps two days later to clear the rest of that energy and to, to we knew we had to go back there. So the following day will be another video that we moved to, went to Glastonbury, drove past Stonehenge and went to Avebury. And then the last video, I suppose, will be the day after we returned to Whittenham Clumps and what happened there.